So, hi everyone and welcome. I am Anne Hoyen and I'm an education specialist with SNOMED International and also one of the chairs of the User Support Reference Group. And I'd like to welcome you all to this webinar. And I'm, I'm very excited to, to invite you to what we now call the SNOMED City Implementation Webinar. Uh, and some of you may be a bit confused uh, as to why I don't present this as a user support reference group meeting. Um, so the reason is that earlier this year, SNOMED International launched the, the web series, which is a collection of, of scheduled webinars showcasing the, the achievements of the SNOMED City community of practice. Um, currently, we have the clinical web series, uh, the research web series, and, and now also the implementation web series. Um, and the implementation web series can be thought of as just one part of the activities within what we know as the user support reference group. We still have our USRG confluence site with our discussion forum. And in future, there may also be other activities uh, held within the context of the USRG group. But having these sessions as implementation web series adds to the consistency with our other uh, SNOMED International activities and the recordings of the webinars will also become uh, more accessible because it will be accessible directly from the SNOMED International website. Uh, so you can look at the different web series uh, and the recordings if you go to this URL. If you wish to sign up for the user support reference group, uh, you can send an email to me uh, using this email address, or you can go to the Confluence site uh, where there is a, an, a link to a, a registration, re registration page. Um, just a couple of housekeeping items before we begin. Um, so you'll notice that, uh, that everyone is currently muted, um, but if you have any questions as we go along, please go ahead and you can enter your question into, into the chat room. Uh, and then when we get a to the q and I'll be sure to, to call on you. And also at that time, if you, you raise your hand, then I can unmute you and you can ask your question. And there's actually not a, a dedicated raise hand option as far as I know here, but you have the, you can just indicate either yes, no, or I don't know, the thumb up or thumb down or a cup of coffee. I'll, either way. So Ronald, how did you do that? I'll just unmute you so that you can explain. Where are you now? Two seconds, I'm trying to find you. Yes, good yeah. afternoon uh, or good Hi. morning, whatever time zone you're in. I have a raise hand option in the participants list. So if you press per the participants, which now shows 50, um, you get a pop-up list with participants and there you have, uh, well, I have raise hand, yes, no, go slower, go faster. And mm. Even some other options. Yeah, so in the in the bottom of the participants panel. Yeah. Maybe it's because you have a different version because I don't have that hand option. I have yes, no, thumb up, thumb down, uh, applause, and and a cup of coffee. Okay. So, so that maybe well. it's because it, there are different versions. But okay, <laughs> thank you, Ronald. I'll mute you again. So if you have something to ask, please just click one of the buttons down there, and then uh, then I'll make sure to call on you. Do any of you have questions before we begin? No? Okay. Well then let's see what's on the on the agenda for today then. And I'll just see if we have Walter here. So Matthias, do you do you heard anything? Uh, I've called, but I I still don't know. Could we start with the other presentation, or is that a? That is an option. Uh, because I'm not so sure what's happening. Naufal, Dr. Naufal, are you there? Ooh. 
would you be okay to start if i yeah. good <clears throat> then, then we'll take it that yeah. way around thank you first of all thank you for inviting us and we have thank today you. with us dr isma she'll do the presentation okay. and then we have uh, some new doctors with us dr zahiri and then our representative from nimos who developed the system together with us Zawawi, and then helping us to run the whole thing is uh, Akram. Okay, can I invite Dr. Isma to start the thing? Of course, Th and thank you very much for going uh, and swapping the, uh, the, the presentation order around. So, is, so Isma, I'm sorry also that you are not here on this, uh, uh, on this uh, slide here, but uh, you are of course uh, very, very welcome to, to this presentation. We're excited to, to have you here. So could you, if I stop share, then you can click the start share button. Yeah, I'll do that. So the first presentation we'll have is the, the experiences with natural language processing in my harmony in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. Done. Let me prepare the front page. <coughs> Thank you. And we can see your slides. Great, wonderful. Um, not yet. Um, so uh, what time is it? Is everybody uh, is from all over the world, right? So good morning, good afternoon, good evening. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm Ismat. Um, hi, Anne. Long time no see. Good to <laughs> And Ronald as well, um, um, but, and welcome to everybody. Um, so uh, thank you for this uh, uh, for this opportunity to share our experience actually on how we develop our uh, system called MyHarmony, which is a natural language processing system that uses Nomad City uh, for us to gather uh, our data and also uh, churn out information from the unstructured clinical text. So um, we've actually uh, prepared um, this content for you, how we actually um, do it, uh, how we get there. But I thought maybe we can show you the final output so that you can appreciate why we want to develop such system. So I'm going to share you another picture. Um, can you see, uh, Anne, can you uh, give feedback with, you can see a picture of a website called I Malaysian Tower Health? No, I can see the, your, your, your slide deck, which okay. says con content. I'm going to new share. Mm. And now I see the Malaysian Health Data Warehouse. All right, great. That's what we want to show you. All right, so um, so you can see here, my harmony is actually a, a system within a bigger system. So my harmony is a system within um, the Malaysian Health Data Warehouse, and the Malaysian Health Data Warehouse is a place for our top management mainly to monitor our um, reports. Uh, at a national uh, national level, so that means all the hospitals, all our clinics uh, nationwide submit data to us, and um, either through uh, several systems that we have here, SMRP, e reporting, quiz, and so forth, and then it will be churned out, analyzed within my health data warehouse through this um, and visualized in different ways. So most of our data is, of course, uh, traditionally in a structured format. Right, um, it's, uh, it's very structured. But we also know that we are moving towards uh, big data and there are a lot of potential where we can mine information from the unstructured data, particularly the, uh, the clinical text. So when we developed this project, we wanted to try out first on um, if we can extract information, information extraction uh, using uh, natural language processing 
where uh, SNOMED CT is used as our clinical terminology, right? So if I want to show you uh, from once my harmony done its job. So my harmony is um, quite complex, I would have to say, um, but that's what what we don't want to show to be, to the regular user. What the regular user would see is the uh, the quality indicators, the output of the quality indicators, what we call here the cardio, uh, the KPI or key performance index. Um, I'm going to show you an example here. So this is um, a list of our KPIs so far. And here are some of the examples that we have for cardiology. So every year, what the cardiology previously, before they had my harmony, right? Before they had, did my my harmony, all the hospitals would need to submit their data in aggregated form, that means in a form of numbers, to the central office um, every month. And at the end of the year, they will, you know, um, accumulate all this data and then create a report. And sometimes they only see the report one year uh, later, right? So what we offered to them was, if we can generate the, the data that they want, the information that they want, uh, from the discharge notes, instead of um, entering the data again, uh, it's uh, basically from the written notes from the doctors at the hospitals uh, given straight to us and we will analyze it and produce the same uh, report for them. So an example here is this one. So um, in this uh, example is uh, the cardiologist, they want to see um, that um, if they actually, uh, the, the percentage of high uh, ACS, acute coronary syndrome cases that undergo catheterization. Um, so they have an indicator here. Uh, another one is non-STEMI case fatality rate. We can churn this out every time the hospital send us uh, the discharge summaries. In fact, we can analyze this uh, backwards, uh, years back if you want to. And we can set this, uh, uh, see this, uh, the trend by year. So this is the outcome of what the users see, right? It's because um, our user is basically the top management and they want to monitor this. Uh, on our side, um, we handle the Mahamani. So, um, and that's where I want to go back to our slide. Uh, let me go back to our slide. Yep. And show you why we wanted to do this. And we see the slides now again. Great. Can you see the presentation? Yes, the benefit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. the benefit of using Mahami. So um, we, we want to move forward. Basically, we want to have a way forward on uh, how we handle our data. Previously, it is uh, very structured. That means whatever information that we want at the top level, we need uh, another entry, sometimes another entry system. Um, Sometimes this uh, the submission is uh, manual and the data is very aggregated. Aggregated means um, it's numbers. You can't really play around and drill down because it's just numbers. And with numbers, sometimes people can, you know, uh, manipulate those numbers. It doesn't represent the real thing. Um, and um, when they publish this, and conventionally, they would publish this yearly or upon request. And that means whatever decision you made is actually the data that happened one year ago. So with my harmony, what we want to do is we want to gather the data at the, at the source, which is the electronic health record. Mm -hmm. And uh, this electronic discharge summary is entered by our house officers, mainly, or the doctors at the hospital when the patient are discharged. Um, these uh, submissions are basically automated um, through a secured uh, FTP 
uh, and what we get is the data is very granular and we can play around with it and we, even the what you see uh, just now the graph is very I mean uh, it's just a basic graph but actually if the cardiologists want to ask more questions we can just um, generate them for, generate it for them because the data is very granular and um, if they give submit the data monthly we can just uh, run the system and then uh, provide the, the information at a more timely fashion so that is actually our um, our motivation on why we want to develop my harmony um, I think if um, if everyone most when we tell this to people, they usually uh, have a sense of um, agreement uh, in a way. Well, I would say they want to move forward. Uh, they don't want to go back to the old way. So the next uh, part would be about telling how we do this, and I am going to. Uh, Presentation. I'm going to cancel the presentation. I have no idea. Okay. Uh, but maybe, perhaps, um, Anne, do you do you want to open uh, for questions now, or do you think um, I can go? I think yeah. If anyone have any questions to the to the introduction because here, the, the then next, the please yeah, go ahead. The next, yeah, the next part is how we do it. So. I think you should uh, continue, uh, Ismat, and right. then uh, we'll take the questions afterwards. Okay. All right. So, um, we, uh, my harmony, we develop in two, two stages actually. Uh, the first stage is uh, my harmony uh, was developed in a very silo, uh, in a silo, uh, in a pla the platform, uh, de de the development of the platform. Uh, bef then the second phase is how we integrate my harmony within my health data warehouse. So during the conceptual stage, um, there are several steps that we need to do first. Not just the platform, which is the system, which is developed by our uh, partner, um, IT partner, Mimos, but we also need to develop uh, the reference set, which is this reference set, this Nomad City reference sets. What are the terms that are being used by our cardiologist? And um, the development of our reference sets actually is a, a big learning curve for us. Um, Snowmat City uh, is very new to us back then. And um, we thought that the best way to learn Snowmat City was actually to just do it <laughs> and learn along the way. So we developed the reference set using Snowmat City, which is our knowledge base. And uh, we also harmonize the local terms um, that's being used uh, to the Snowman City, the international release. Um, if for your information, our discharge summary and our clinical notes are mainly written in English, uh, mix of UK and US English, um, and maybe Australian as well. Um, most of our, some of our uh, graduates are from there. So uh, I would say 95 more than that are written in English. So it's easy to adapt. We do not have to um, translate uh, Snowmass City to our local language, but there are certain language that we use uh, that we need to map to uh, Snowmass City. For example, <clears throat> um, I remember the case of uh, atrial fibrillation. Um, it, locally, we, when we say um, uh, fast atrial, uh, we actually use the word fast atrial fibrillation, fast AF. Um, whereas um, internationally in Snowmat City, they use another term, so we had to map that. Mm. They use a rapid atrial fibrillation, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And then uh, the second part is actually development of the tool. So this is the, the platform that, um, the platform, the backend platform actually. This is what the, not the, what the user, end user uh, see. This is what we at PIK uh, does so we actually upload the whole Snowmat City release. You can see here the Snowmat City International release. And uh, when we develop the reference sets, we re refer that reference sets to the international release. So whatever updates we need to update together with the international release. 
the first uh, reference sets that we developed was the cardiology reference sets. So you can see here. And his has been updated. Uh, it is a live document. So, so sometimes we need to update because there are requirements for terms, new terms that needs to be added um, in our reference set. Once we manage the terminology, we upload the data. Uh, some data are uploaded manually, uh, but we also now we have the ability to uh, gather data automatically um, from the hospital straight into my harmony uh, without a manual upload. And then the, the best part is the codification man management. Basically what it does is, uh, this is where the NLP component uh, works, uh, where uh, the NLP uh, identify the terms uh, in the discharge summaries um, and codify it according to SNOMED City. Um, at the same time, uh, it also has uh, some, uh, what do they call that? Um, uh, some uh, inter intelligence to know that um, if the doctor writes, for example, no murmur, um, uh, the, the negation part of um, yeah, written in the discharge summary, it won't be codified. So we've uh, catered that in our My Harmony. It's not just tagging terms, but also some intelligence behind it to allow um, context uh, taken into place. And then uh, the query management is where we query the data. Uh, basically, we use uh, SQL. Um, uh, and uh, this is where we actually uh, compare the data uh, once uh, it is being codified, it is being sent to Malaysian Health Data Warehouse, the visualization component, and to create the, all the charts. But we also make sure that the data that we sent into my Health Data Warehouse has been verified. So how we verify it is we make sure that whatever we query within Mahamani is the same numbers that we get at the output in my Health Data Warehouse. So um, there are also questions that how uh, the strategy that we took, why did we take the back end implementation? So in terms of strategy, uh, when it comes to approaching um, the people, we actually have three main team players, um, us at PIK, the NRC Malaysia. So we are the people who understand Snowmat City. Uh, and we are also the person in between the ICT people as well as the engineers as well as the, the clinicians or the top management. Um, we, when we entered, uh, when we start uh, join um, Snowmed City International, um, um, we find that um, there are a lot of um, I guess uh, I wouldn't say issues, but uh, there are a lot of challenges when it comes to getting buy-in from the top management to maintain and sustain uh, uh, the use of Snowmed City and subscribing to Snowmed City. So that's when we thought that we need to have a deliverable that is um, short within one to two years and we have to give a result that is quite early in the phase. Um, I'm going to skip this part. Uh, maybe we can go there in the time. But um, this is what we meant by a tripartite arrangement when it comes to um, when it comes to uh, working uh, and developing my harmony. Um, we, I would say, we are lucky that that uh, in our center, the health informatics, um, we are, are also, most of us are, has a background in clinical, a clinical background. So for example, for cardiology, we have experience with working with cardiologists and at the hospital. So we understand the workflow that they had, they had to face uh, at the ground level. And we also understand the process and the terms that's being used. So when we engage the clinicians, it's easy to understand what they required and to translate that to the ICT engineers. 
um, how we maintain the <coughs> Mm, it's very focused. We know already that we want to focus on unstructured data. Um, and um, our deliverable is basically the development of the reference sets, which we, we actually took us one year to learn how to develop that. And now that we have the method, we can just replicate the same, use the same method uh, for other reference sets. And also, uh, secondly, uh, the development of the, uh, the system itself. The output is we want to generate report. We know that we want to generate report for the cardiologist using SNOMED CT as our um, terminology and utilize that SNOMED CT relationship. I forgot to mention that um, MyHarmony not only uh, codifies the data, when it generates the information, it doesn't just only take the terms, but also the children of the term. Uh, it search all the children. So. Uh, if, um, for example, if I want to find all the cases of IHD, ischemic heart disease, it will also search all the cases, the children cases, uh, children terms such as acute coronary syndrome, heart attack, myocardial infarction, and so forth. So um, that actually you know, showing to the cardiologists that we can actually do that um, actually makes them quite happy because if you see, uh, if you know the conventional way, you have to include this one by one. So um, with some SCT, we don't have to do that anymore. Right, so um, the next one is the, the implementation. Um, at the time when we joined Snowmed City International, um, there are a lot of implementation at the front end. Um, but for us, when we reflect back, if we want to implement this at the front end, we had a lot, we will face a lot of challenges because our EHR systems are developed by different vendors and these are proprietary system. And if I, we want to introduce any changes, um, usually it will incur additional cost and cost is very limited to us. Um, for, uh, and uh, at the same time, if we do implement it at the electronic health record at the front end, we were uh, afraid that um, it might reduce the performance of the system while the system is running to cater for treatment of patients at the hospital. So uh, that's when we decided to take the back end approach. That means uh, we take in the discharge summaries, the copy of that, of the discharge summaries, and analyze it in a different system, which is what you guys are uh, looking at now is the, the MyHarmony. Um, we, right, so this is the method that we developed the reference set. Um, is, um, I think we can skip this for now. Um, if uh, there are more questions about this, um, we can uh, answer that later. But basically, um, it, we look at the information model, uh, we present it to the domain expert, and uh, the last step is actually very important. We need to get the consensus and endorsement by the, by the domain expert. Um, that means, um, for example, if I want to show you here, uh, we made it very simple to them um, how we map certain terms that they require in their report to the SNOMED city terms. Is, is Matt, I'm not sure we are looking at the slide you intend, uh, you want us to see. Oh, really? Um, what, what slide is it? It's the, the, the teamwork slide. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, so now we see, now we see uh, the process with the one, two, three, with the information model, domain okay, expert. Um, is that the correct? So this is this should be the correct. Good, great. <clears throat> right. So this is what we've shown you: um, the cardiology KPI. And I'm going to skip this, and I will way forward. Um, basically, what we want to do now is actually expand our reference set not just to cardiology, we're also working with uh, the oral health uh, team because they are developing their system and they want to actually analyze their procedures in their uh, system using uh, MyHarmony. Uh, we're also exploring the global patient set, uh, which we presented in the previous uh, last year's uh, 
conference. Um, we're also looking at uh, uh, how we can use Snowmax City in, um, yeah, to, uh, in other areas such as uh, traditional and Chinese medicine. Um, I think Dr. Kazi can explain this uh, better because of the recent, uh, recent work. Um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, we in Malaysia, we also have a traditional complementary medicine wing um, uh, catering to the Chinese medicine, uh, Indian medicine, uh, Malay medicine. And uh, we're working with one of the hospital to actually map mm -hmm. these terms to the Snowmat city and um, generate uh, statistics for them. The current work is halted because of the Tungshin. But I think the principle is when we have the data in Chinese and we like to see whether we can map it to Snowmat City terms. If it is mapped properly, then we can do the analysis. <coughs> but we cannot show you now because this is halted. Uh, until we get back to that project, we will inform you. Okay. Okay. Ismat, I can see there is a question. Should we take it now? Right. Yeah. Barbara, I'll just unmute you. Okay, thank you. Um, you mentioned that your discharge summaries are that come from the hospitals are structured. Does every hospital in the country follow the same format so that the particular pieces of information that you would like to pull out of the record are located in approximately the same place in all of the records from every hospital? Uh, thanks for the question. Actually, um, our discharge summaries is semi-structured. That means there are certain headings, you know, um, uh, uh, history of presenting illness, uh, past history and all that. And within that uh, structure, there are the unstructured data, which is the, the blob of text, right? Um, when we uh, actually, we are now receiving uh, from multiple hospitals, and you are correct, the, the, the challenges is actually trying to merge all this uh, different um, format of discharge summaries into one. So one of the steps that we developed, uh, that we had to do was actually to create a common um, template of uh, discharge summary. Um, and the hospital actually had to, uh, we, we, work, we work with them where we, they need to map all these uh, different headings uh, to the uh, template before it can be uh, consumed by Mahamuni for uh, you know for a consistent um, analysis yeah and codification does that answer you, your question Barbara uh, I when you receive the discharge summary do you receive it as a PDF or is it already uh, in an electronic format in which the different uh, parts of the record are in different fields it's in electronic format. Actually, we request for them to be sent into JSON format, but if they can't, we still accept Excel. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Are there any more questions? Ismat, could, is it possible for you to elaborate a bit of that on the collaboration between the natural language processing um, algorithm or, or those producing that algorithm and you, the Snowman CT experts, in terms of, of getting the most accurate results. So how has the collaboration been? Well, um, I think there are a lot of work to be done still. There's a lot, a lot of room of improvement. But we do see, for example, when we um, compare the data, when we use NLP with uh, Snowmax City and NLP without Snowmax City. And we managed to show that. I don't have the slide here, but um, as an example, if I used um, uh, Snowmax City, uh, um, uh, my harmony with Snowmax City, basically uh, the NLP with Snowmax City, I can get uh, more data. For Remember using the subsumption technique, for example, if I want to search for ischemic heart disease, I will not only take the data for ischemic heart disease, but all the children concept related to it. So um, comparing to a conventional method, 
where if it's a structured data, we have to make sure that we can only collect certain uh, certain um, data. So if, if, if I can explain this better, maybe in the old way of reporting the cardiology, the cardiology report, they only take into account three diseases, which is um, uh, acute coronary syndrome, unstable angina, and stable angina. So but with, with SNOMED CT in place in my harmony, uh, they will take all types of this um, in uh, looking into at how, you know, how different people write, how the doctors write, including all the different types of uh, myocardial infarction, and they don't miss it out. Um, secondly, there are also contexts uh, that we can be used when you use NLP. Uh, for example, uh, the context of negation or the context of uh, certainty. You know, for example, yeah. if the doctors write um, uh, past history of MI, then because my harmony, uh, the NLP allows the, uh, the context of past history, uh, they know that that is not the current case. Um, another example is if the patient, uh, if the doctors write not known to have diabetes, you know the doctors always write like to write the negation, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and they understand the my NLP allows to understand that uh, that the patient doesn't have diabetes, um, not the other way around. So um, I would say that um, with uh, Snowmed City, um, I think that is the the. Uh, the factor why uh, the clinicians like it so much. Mm -hmm. I can see that Susan, you have also a question. Yes, thank you, Anna, and um, thanks. Uh, I actually have a couple of questions. Um, when you are um, using the NLP, are you only codifying the certain SNOMED terms that you're in the areas that you're interested in, in terms of the oncology and cardiology, or are you casting a wider net around um, how the patient presents? And that, that's the one question. The second question is, um, do you do much quality control in terms of just checking to make sure that the NLP is actually picking things up correctly? And what would that look like? So the first question is about um, whether it's, we we that's why we develop our reference set. Um, the reference set allows us to constrain um, the terms that is being used, and um, it's actually a part of our quality assurance as well. Um, for example, you know there are certain terms that are being used uh, in multiple uh, in different specialty, but it means different thing. Um, for example, um, I don't know what example. Oh, okay. Uh, 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 sorry. And no, um, for example, I would say, uh, uh, what do you say? What do you call that? Uh, I forgot an a good example. But anyway, so uh, our reference set allows us to constrain. And when we develop at the end of our development of the reference set, we make sure the cardiologist um, agree. Uh, that these terms actually uh, means what it means uh, to generate the report. So um, we have not developed uh, a reference set, for example, the whole snowmacity to run on a, uh, on a whole discharge summary. We actually cater, uh, we, we try to constrain uh, to take into uh, account the discharge and summary for uh, from cardiology ward or cardiology hospital and run it across uh, the cardiology reference set. And um, which is connected to your second question, how we monitor and validate our data. So one of the useful part of our MyHarmony is when uh, we develop the query management where we can uh, query uh, our data using SQL. So what it allows us is actually to uh, gener uh, to uh, to see whether um, uh, does no uh, does my harmony does its job correctly. For example, uh, in one case, um, 
when we generate data, for example, the number of uh, cases for non-STEMI, right, and, and STEMI, um, naturally, we would expect that uh, there's a way that, um, the, the actually, the graph would show the, the data of using my harmony with SNOMED City and without SNOMED City. So naturally, usually, the data with SNOMED City would show higher numbers compared to the one without SNOMED City because of the subsumption technique. But in one example, we found that the numbers is lower. Um, and in this case, when we generate the data for non-STEMI, and we wanted to know why this is the case. So we look back and try to find all the data that was tagged with non-STEMI. And we found that actually my harmony was correct because um, the reason why um, the one without SNOM ST was higher is because it just tagged the term non-STEMI, but it doesn't, uh, but because my harmony takes into account uh, the context, it understands that actually in the discharge summary it was written as uh, past history of um, non-STEMI or no known K, no history of non-STEMI. So that's how we validate our data. And we also validate the data from that, that, that query management. We also make sure that the numbers that we generate there are also the same as the numbers that's generated in, in the visualization, the end visualization to the end user. I hope um, it's a very, <laughs> I, I don't have a slide to show you how we do it, but, uh, uh, but I hope that answers your, some of your questions. It does, for sure. Thank you very much, Ismat. I think we will, uh, I think we'll say thank you for now and then we'll continue to the next presentation. And then if there are some questions at the end, we can, we can uh, yep. yeah, leave it uh, to a broader set of questions at the end. Are you okay with that? Yes. Perfect. Thank you very much, Ismat. Um, And I apologize for not uh, for not giving you the proper introduction, but uh, but thank you very much to all of you who have who have been preparing this presentation. So, Dr. Katsia bin Shaik Ahmad and Dr. Mohammed Naufal bin Nordin, and of course you also, Ismat. Thank you very much. So let's move on to the next presentation for today, which is the migrating clinical data using NLP and SNOMED City in Belgium. And that will be presented by Walter, Walter Ferbuke and Matthias de Wachter. And a bit on Walter. Walter is a, a critical care physician who works uh, in the Antwerp uh, University in Belgium. And he's also the chief medical informatics officer of the hospital. And Matthias is uh, also a PhD in speech recognition from Leuven U University. So we look forward to hear and, uh, and see your presentation. I will unmute you, Walter, and leave the floor to you. Great, thank you. Sorry for being late. <laughs> um, I, I hope you can see my screen. You should see a PowerPoint. Yes, we can see it. Okay, so uh, I'm going to tell you about our use case, which is which is very different of the previous one. It's, it's a real clinical case. We are um, a Belgian hospital in Antwerp, an academic center, um, and we are implementing an EMR system uh, right now. Um, we do have uh, already some EMR best of breed system, and we're now moving to an integrated EMR system. We plan to go live in March next year if um, COVID-19 uh, doesn't um, influence the timeline anymore. And SNOMED CT becomes quite an important thing. Um, we are going to use it in several areas, but um, the biggest or the most important one is the well, the use uh, for documentation of uh, diagnosis and procedures. So, and we are the first one in Belgium to, to implement this, this EMR system. So it, um, 
it's not always that easy. So for Go Live, the scope of Snowmid CT is to create a centralized and also a structured medical and surgical history. And so we are using the, the Millennium Information Model, of course, and Snowmid CT. And so the clinical reason for this is to create a single source of truth for our clinical history uh, that is accessible to, to, to everybody who, who needs to know, of course. When we started this project, um, we thought about how would we do this because we have a lot of medical records in an electronic form already. And um, we heard around in other hospitals how they did that. And um, we learned that um, some hospitals really did no migration at all of the clinical history, just a cold turkey. Uh, approach where the medical history is empty and where your doctors or anyone else codes manually the clinical history in the, when the patient uh, is scheduled or presents for the first time. And our doctors weren't very um, well enthusiastic about uh, that part. Um, and it would also have a huge impact on productivity. So we decided to do a migration before go live and our doctors would document, but also verify and confirm the migrated clinical history when the patient presents or when they prepare uh, the visit. And then of course we ran into the problem of volume and the problem of quality. Uh, in fact, our approach is mixed because we won't be able to migrate all. So there will be uh, a part of it will be empty and a part of the medical records uh, will be migrated. Where are we coming from? We are coming from this. Uh, this is free text. Our medical history, wow. our surgical history lives in, in letters uh, and we are just writing it there. And uh, I think that's the case in many uh, uh, medical records in many hospitals. You just copy and paste it. It can be in various forms and our target is to go to uh, well, a structured form where SNOMED CT would be uh, the diagnosis or procedure. We also need a date of onset or a date and then a laterality. And of course, we probably need also some free text uh, because uh, you can't catch everything in the SNOMED CT concept. So that's where we're going to. So let's do it. Um, you can go through a text and then start to annotate uh, and uh, you will find uh, the different parts of the information model. But of course, if you have to do that manually, it's, it's, it's impossible. So um, we have millions of records. Um, we won't be able to do it all. We said from the beginning that we will focus on active patients and more precisely on the patients who visit the outpatient clinic, because as a doctor in the outpatient clinic, you have, well, 20 minutes, half an hour to see a patient. If you spend 20 minutes encoding the patient, then uh, you don't have any time for the patient anymore. We calculated that, uh, well, around 350,000 patients would visit the outpatient clinic in one year, and it, that would correspond to 129,000 unique patients. And well, if you go on, you would see that the number of unique or new patients that comes to the clinic will decrease to a plateau. And from the third year, we assume that the plateau is, is, is reached. So that means that at least two years of migration should be done uh, to be safe. And um, we were looking for, um, well, uh, a software that would allow us to go fast and to do that, um, well, in a very eff efficient way. So we looked for a software to identify not only SNOMED CT codes, but also software 
that uh, would suggest or identify all elements of the information model we target. So that is the SNOMED CT concept that is in the clinical finding and the procedure hierarchy. Um, also all relevant metadata, that is the date and the laterality. And of course, in the software, we would uh, need the ability to add the free text comment that is uh, often necessary to elaborate on, on a diagnosis. And then we would uh, need, uh, well, the assisted part is the annotator who would validate a su suggestion or either reject a suggestion or identify that a su suggestion is not relevant. Or maybe if the software did not identify a relevant uh, diagnosis or procedure, procedure give the ability to add a diagnosis and a procedure that is not suggested and of course all relevant metadata. And what we also wanted was a software that could learn from the feedback of the annotator. So we needed an NLP algorithm that is performant and we approached it with, um, well, a test. We compared uh, several vendors. We started with the golden data set that we annotated manually. And then uh, we compared it with uh, a couple of algorithms and finally we selected uh, one. What was very important in our selection process was that the user interface is very performant. It should allow to process um, the medical record at high speed given the high volume. We also wanted the software to allow multiple users simultaneously to work on the medical record and it should be uh, web-based and allow an end user to remove access in a safe environment uh, because we are using uh, people who work off-site uh, to do this uh, migration. And I'll dive into the uh, software and you'll see uh, uh, how it works. So now you should see um, the ANO tool, if everything works fine. Is that correct? Uh, no, I just see the white, uh, white slide saying demo. Okay, I'll unshare and share again. Um, and Now you should see my Citrix screen. Yeah. Okay. You do. You do. So we're in the software. I, I logged in um, and I'll explain you how, how it works and you'll see um, how we work, as, uh, how we do the migration in fact. Um, what I'll first show you is that um, what you see here when I click here is um, the data sets. And all these data sets are packages and these packages contain about a hundred medical records. So I'll open up uh, a demo package, which I already did. And you can see that uh, in this demo package, we have nine patients that are anonymized. Um, I can open a medical record, but before I'll do that, you'll see um, that we have the patient here. The last time he came uh, to the hospital and then the number of documents um, that are included in the package for each patient. Um, we are um, putting um, patients in our packages um, uh, today looking at the patients who are active and at a certain point we will switch 
to the patients that are scheduled in the outpatient uh, clinic to be very to the point and have a focus on these uh, patients. You see that I already processed uh, one uh, uh, patient and I'll show you how that worked. I select a patient and um, you see this is the overview of the documents um, with uh, the documents that are in the package and I'll show you the letters. Because in this packet, in this patient, we included three letters that we will use as the source for the annotation. When we upload the patient, we uh, upload maximum 10 documents. We assume that when we have the 10 latest documents that we have a quite complete overview of, of the patient. So when on the left pane, you see the letters that we use as a source to do the annotation. On the right pane of the screen, you see all the SNOMED CT concepts that the system has found or suggests. Um, the software first looks at the part in the letter where the medical and the surgical history is located. You see here squares and you only see them in this section. And in this letter, the antecedente, which is the Dutch word for past medical history, the software identified the section where the uh, diagnosis and procedures are located and only in that section the software starts looking for SNOMED CT concepts. And you see where there are squares, uh, that's, these are um, uh, uh, well concepts that uh, the system will suggest to the annotator. The same is true for the other letters where uh, you can run through um, and then um, uh, see um, uh, if you can't complete, because not every letter, we, we have free text, not every letter is complete. They use copy and paste, and you can see often that, uh, well, doctors uh, not always uh, uh, copy or make that uh, medical history is, is complete. Before I go to the annotations, I'll show you uh, that um, I already did this one. Uh, I can show you an overview of all the concepts that have been uh, suggested and validated. These are the ones that are validated and you see the data. This is a concept uh, of diagnosis or procedure with a laterality if it's there, but it's not there and a date. The other concepts have not been validated. So only these concepts will be in the data set for migration. I'll go back to another one and start annotating one. So again, I select a patient. Uh, this um, patient has only one uh, letter. And um, when I just uh, have here my screen on the right pane, it, it just suggests all the concepts that have been identified. When I want to start annotating, the most simple thing is just select it and then uh, look at the right pane and the system will uh, show me in an order of importance of likelihood which concept is the most appropriate. And uh, you see here the numbers, um, but endometriosis, of course, it's in Dutch, is the correct one. When I want to annotate it, I just have to click on it and I validate. So in this case, I can validate. If the system um, finds a concept, but it's not correct, I can say it's not correct. If the system finds a concept, but it's not relevant, but it's correct, I can say it's not relevant. The latter is very important because if I don't use this button correct and I use it's, I say it's, 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 a, it's an error, uh, then the, the concept is not suggested anymore in the future. I can do that on purpose when I don't want a suggestion anymore because it's, it's, it's really an error. But so, uh, in, in many cases, I, I click on non-relevant. But here, 
it's simple. I just can uh, click on validate and I'm ready to do the next one. So again, I can uh, uh, select uh, and the system will um, suggest me, which is of course correct, validate and so on and so on. Um, this is very simple because we don't have any um, dates here, but I'll show you another one. I think it's here. Where, for instance, this is more complicated. This is like uh, a cardiac patient. And um, I can, for instance, um, select this one. And you see that the system already shows me also the date. If there is a laterality somewhere in the text, the system will put here uh, a laterality. Uh, for instance, suppose this is like a fracture of, 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 of a bone, the system would uh, identify the left or the, or the right laterality, uh, this, and I can correct it. What is very important is that um, we can, um, look at it in more detail. We can correct, of course, date and, and, and whatever you need. And we can add free text because we learned very quickly that a medical or a surgical history based only on SNOMIT CT concepts is not workable in clinic. So probably you need some more additional information and you can find it in the text. And it's very simple because you can say, I want to copy it. And then you can select the text that you want to add and just validate it. There is another feature, which is a very important thing. And I'll come back on it later, is that you can click on the review necessary. So the people we have who do the annotation are not always, uh, uh, have not always a medical degree or there is a discussion on the correctness of a, of, a, of a concept, of an annotation. And then it's possible to say, hey, uh, is this correct? I have some doubt. I want to, whatever you want uh, to say, you review it and you're ready. And you see here that uh, this is a patient with a remark. And when we do the quality control, we can go to these medical records and just look at it and give feedback, correct it, and make sure that uh, this works fine. So um, this works quite fast. Um, what is very interesting is that um, the system, well, uh, suggests a lot. And so you only have to do this. Uh, what is also interesting is that the system uh, allows you to select text that is like this, not continuous. And if there is a concept that is uh, corresponding, it will, it, will, it will suggest it for you. I'll show you. Um, so there is one remark on this uh, medical record. Uh, when our quality um, control uh, team goes in, they just have to uh, uh, figure out which uh, of the records uh, have, uh, have, a, uh, have a remark. And you see when an annotator uh, has some doubt and makes a remark, you can see simply that it's already here in the status and you can filter on the status of the medical record and just simply filter out all the medical records that need um, review. Just to be complete, um, Sometimes it's possible that um, you're not sure or something is not there. Suppose that the system doesn't suggest the correct um, concept. It does correct, uh, uh, by the way. I can also search. So I could uh, say sickle and then look at it.
and I could add uh, a, a concept uh, if uh, if the system doesn't help me. So. Let's uh, maybe stop here for a, a little while and just um, ask if there are any questions. Thank you, Walter. We have a few. Susan, would you uh, would you start? I'll just unmute you. Uh, I think that, that I if that's me, I'd already asked my question before, not okay. this time. Okay. No worries. Good. Graham um, Ponting, you also have a question. I will just unmute you, so maybe you can. I can find you here. Here you are. Yes. Can you can you hear me? Yes, we hear you now. Graham. Okay. Yeah. Um, that that was really interesting. But what I'm not quite sure on the right side. Are we looking at the patient record itself, the the Cerner record? Or no, we are not looking at the Cerner record. We are looking at the 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 source. Uh, so this is the the source is the is is the is a current medical record we are using now, and the medical history lives in letters. So on the left pane, you see the the source. On the right pane, you see the suggestions, and so uh, we are now constructing the data set that is. The SNOMED CT concept, of course, of the diagnosis or the procedure, a date, a laterality, and some free text, and that will be imported in Millennium. But so it's, not, so it's, it's then imported into Millennium. Yes, that's the second. Yeah. That's well. That's the last step: is importing it in Millennium uh, after uh, it. Uh, the annotator has uh, said uh, it's okay, and then the very final step is uh, the acceptance of the doctor. Uh, and, and the import includes um, post coordination, for example, laterality? The import uh, includes all the elements I showed before uh, date, diagnosis, well, date, diagnosis, or procedure, laterality, and free text. Okay, thank you very much. And Mohammed, uh, Naufal, you have a question as well. I'll just unmute you too. Hi, and uh, yeah, I, hi, I'd like, hi, I would like to ask, um, how many annotators are working on this? Well, that's the next slide um, in my presentation. Um, just maybe um, I'll go back to my presentation if you allow me. Yeah, uh, while, while you're doing that, uh, my next question, I just wanted to know, once you've migrated all this data, to a codified SNMED CT, um, uh, what would be your next step? How, how would you use that? The CT? next step is import it in uh, Millennium mm -hmm. and use it as the medical surgical history that is now coded in SNMED mm -hmm. CT. And that, uh, well, as we use it in, uh, in Belgium, it would be, well, the starting point of getting to know a patient. It would be our well, short elevated pitch of the patient, but it will be coded in SNOMED CT, at least partially. Uh, that's how we see that. So I hope you can see my, my slide deck again. Yes, we can. So we, we can also do some uh, statistics in the software. Uh, there is a dashboard. So this is the number of SNOMED CT concepts per patient. Uh, you see that it's, um, many patients uh, have a fairly low number. And this is the number of unique concepts uh, we uh, have used. And um, that's uh, regarding your question, who is doing this? So we have a team, we have a manager, we have a quality coordinator, we have two full-time annotators, well, two and a half, uh, we have had three. And then we have master students. Um, we started low with a couple of, uh, well, let's say six. And I think if I'm correct, today we have 35 master students uh, in medicine who are uh, doing this uh, annotation. 
Um, we organize this annotation in sprints. Uh, one sprint is two weeks and uh, one sprint contains like a hundred medical records. Uh, during and after each sprint, we do quality control and there is also feedback for our students uh, uh, provided. Um, and the goal is to do 125,000 records at go live. So are we going to get there? Yes, probably well. Uh, you see how we progressed. Um, you see that the line is not straight. That's because our students also have to study and they have exams. So uh, during some months, um, like in December or in June, they, uh, they don't annotate, but uh, like, uh, well, in, in, in holiday time, they, uh, they annotate uh, like, like hell. An important uh, thing is quality control. We, we have a one FTE who is the quality coordinator. He, he has a medical degree and that's important. So he's responsible for the resolution of questions uh, related to the annotation, all the remarks have to be solved. Uh, we do also uh, sampling and control of, of um, annotations, uh, unsolicited uh, controls. Uh, that's often necessary uh, when you uh, board a new annotator to make them acquainted with our habits. They get feedback um, and he's also uh, authoring and managing what we call the annotation guideline, which is a written document uh, that is um, well written to define what is relevant, what not, how do we do this in our organization, what is our best practice, and also to ensure consistency in the annotation that our clinicians have a, have a, have a, have a nice uh, well starting point uh, when they start using uh, Millennium. And that's about it for me, unless there are any questions. Thank you very much, Walter. There is a couple of questions. Um, Barbara, would you please uh, go ahead? I have just unmuted you. Uh, yes, uh, sorry if this was covered and I just, uh, it passed me by. Uh, what browser works behind the, behind the scenes to uh, propose the best uh, options for, for different we, diagnoses. We use Google Chrome, but Matthias is very much better to explain how and what. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, so maybe you will elaborate on that in a few moments, uh, Matthias. There's another, qu there's another question from, from Luis. Uh, you can see it in the chat, everyone. So do you have an example extract of the document sent to Millennium after annotation and so forth that generated after NLP and review? Uh, no, uh, we did not do any update, upload today, but we have, we have our data set um, that is going to be uploaded. So that's not a big deal. Um, we are still uh, uh, waiting for the, the API that will allow us to upload uh, our data set uh, in, in the information model of Millennium, but, but it will present in Millennium as, as, as a table uh, in the generic functionality. It's two tables, a diagnosis and a procedure table. We will have one table where diagnosis and procedures are together and you can order it chronic, uh, in chronological uh, order um, and, and you can add comments uh, in the table, so uh, it will it will be very similar to what you've seen uh, on the free text example. Hey, do you listen to me? Yeah, we can hear you. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's, I've been having problems with the microphone. That's why I go to. But yeah, my so my main question uh, or my question regards if once you load the information in Millennium, uh, do you keep all the original text? or only the Sonoma City codes once they are reviewed? Uh, in the data set um, that we, uh, well, the result of the annotation allows us to go back to the original text. Okay. Um, and, and, and in theory, it would, be, it would be possible to upload also original texts, yeah. 
Okay, mm -hmm. thank you, thanks. And then we have a question from Maggie, who, who asked about the, the, how good the system is to map abbreviations from the documents. Uh, well, quite good because it's trained. <laughs> the, 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 the very first one I showed you was AHT, which is an abbreviation of arterial hypertension, and, and he can find it. Um, once we, you annotate it, the system is able to retain that and apply it on other, uh, other uh, medical records and other, uh, other letters. And it, and it goes quite fast. So a, a student can do in a sprint 100 medical records. Let's say that that's about, uh, well, not all have 10 letters in their uh, data set, but um, that, that's quite fast. Um, Thank you. We also have a question from Fernando Portilla, and that relates to ebs.ai uh, and the role of this tool. So maybe that's a good, um, good uh, hook, hook to the next uh, presenter, Matthias. Yeah, well, the EBS AI tool is the one I showed you. Eh? <laughs> yeah. So should we hand over to, uh, yes. to a couple of minutes to, to Matthias? Of course, yes. Um, and Matthias, you should be able to share your screen now. And while you prepare, we can just take the question from, uh, from Ismat. Was that a new question? Oh, yeah, it's a new question. Um, you were talking about abbreviations. Um, I was wondering how you um, handle ambiguous terms and abbreviations. That means um, the terms that share uh, uh, different stomacity concepts. I am on you should no. be. Uh, yeah, okay, sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry, I was trying to type uh, this <laughs> the, that I couldn't un unmute. Could you repeat the question, please? Ismat. Ismat, your question about the uh, abbreviations? Yeah, um, I wanted to know how uh, the system handles ambiguous terms and ambiguous uh, abbreviations, those terms that have multiple SNOMAD concepts. Um, yes, yeah, so, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm fighting with the screen sharing. Uh, so I, I think you asked about ambiguous terms, right? So um, yes, the basically the system will will um, show the different options the, the different um, synonyms and the different uh, snowmet concepts that are um, linked to that uh, synonym and the user will choose um, we will we have a re-ranker that that can learn uh, what's the most likely one uh, but we show the the, the, the string difference uh, in the tool, but basically it's up to the up to the user, and it will it will just keep all the different suggestions. I will talk a bit more about this in the in the results and how that impacts the 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 precision of the system. Um, Thank you, Matthias. Uh, to have some minutes uh, for your presentation, we'll hold on with Ingrid the question. So just go ahead. Can you see which screen can you see now? Because uh, we see the we see your presentation. Just just a single presentation, right? A single presentation. Okay, yes. okay great. Uh, so I'm Matthias de Wachter from Ives AI, um, and uh, we created the tool uh, together with uh, University Hospital. Um, I have, I have more slides than, than I have time to show, but I think we'll send around the, the full slide deck. There, there are some interesting statistics maybe, but I'll have to skip them. Um, so Walter already mentioned that this whole system is, a, is an online 
machine learning se setup. So on the right side, you have um, like the, the machine learning algorithm. It will take uh, the, the free text documents and annotate them. It will send the suggestions together with those documents to the human annotators. They will choose uh, some of them, reject some others, maybe add some manually, and the annotations go back to the to the machine learning system, which will train and use this extra uh, knowledge for the next uh, patient. Um, so Walter basically showed what it looks like from the, from the users, from the annotators, and I will talk a bit more about the algorithms or rather the ev evaluation of the algorithms and, and the task. Um, so as I said, it's an online machine learning algorithm. Uh, it uses both these validated and rejected suggestions to, to learn. And it learns immediately. So once one user, uh, one user um, uh, selects something and annotates it, then the next user, like a second later, can, can use this information already. Um, an important note is that it's hosted within the hospital infrastructure. Um, that has the obvious advantage that the data stays in the hospital um, in terms of, of like privacy. Uh, but it does have some limitations for us as a, as a AI company that we, we don't have access to the full data to do, to do batch retraining and, and use the full context of the documents in the models. Um, I'll, before I go to the results, uh, or, or the evaluation, I mean, of the of the suggestion engine. I'll talk a little bit about how hard this is as a machine learning task. Um, this slide contains two things that are, that make it a bit easier. So normally, SNOMED has, I believe, something like three hundred and ninety thousand concepts, but we're limiting ourselves. I mean, as asked by the hospital, of course to disorders, procedures, and findings. Um, and that, that's 170,000, a bit more, uh, concepts that we need to be able to identify. And uh, in the, I think there was almost 100,000 patients that have been um, annotated. Uh, in those patients, 24,000 unique concept IDs were used. I think Walter already showed this. Um, this, this next remark, uh, it says see later for the very sparse set of official translations. Um, I, I won't show the, that other slide. So it's just, uh, um, what I mean is that just going from the official translations from the Belgian release, at the moment that you don't get very far. Uh, the, the re I know that the release is, the next release will contain many more translations. So uh, it, will, it will improve, but I had some some statistics to show that even then you need you need you really need to learn uh, the way that the doctors phrase certain um, uh, concepts. It's also limited to just the medical history, as Walter already showed. Uh, another thing that that makes the machine learning task hard is uh, also something that Walter showed that some concepts are split in terms of text. So, for example, liver and kidney metastases. You don't write liver metastases and kidney metastases, uh, but the liver and uh, it spans over this and kidney. So the, the annotators can select liver and metastases and it will be one, uh, one phrase. Um, sadly, the, the suggestion engine doesn't do this yet. So around 5% of all the annotations are like this and um, they can't, we can't do this correctly yet. That is to say before, like the initial suggestions, after the user has, um, has indicated those phrases, then it, can, then it can make the correct suggestions. And also often the concept ID is derived from the wider context. For example, if, if, um, if it's an excision of some, some tumor, uh, um, then, often the, the user will um, say excision is the phrase and then the concept ID will be something much more fine-grained like um, the, the, including the body part and the, um, the actual type of carcinoma and, and maybe even the, the technique used. Um, 
it and this, all this other information is is derived from a wider context um it would be possible to tease out all the different pieces of, of text that together form the exact description but um that's of course very time consuming so from the from the the, the point of view of the hospital it's more important that they get this correct concept and not that the training material that is sent to the machine learning algorithm is the best possible right so that's what i mean with the, the training data is a bit noisy um before, and then so i'll i'll show some uh, um, numbers to show how good uh, how well the suggestion engine is working um, um, but before that i need to introduce what precision and recall mean um, so uh, precision is basically the, the number of suggestions that were uh, validated by the by the annotators and recall is the number of validated um, and the percentage of validated concepts that were actually suggested um, type one errors so the, these precision errors are much cheaper than type two errors because all you have to do is ignore them and go to the next one in the list while for type two errors you need to look up the correct concept possibly like as walter showed using the search engine or maybe on, on the internet or something um, and that's why we, we talk about these soft type two errors when what walter showed when you when you uh, show when you select a piece of text it can still um, uh, recover from the initial suggestion error if you look at the soft evaluation you see that over time um, so now we're not counting these soft type 2 errors as mistakes you see that we get to uh, around 99 percent currently um, this this year like the at the end of july it go sorry at the beginning of july it goes down a lot but that's at that time there was very few annotations being done so if you see the last two months there was a lot of annotation a lot of activity and it's been pretty consistently uh, around 99 percent if you look at the hard evaluation where these soft uh, errors are uh, actually counted as errors you also see that it goes currently towards 90 percent um, recall while the precision um, is has actually gone down from around 30 percent to 20 percent that means that you see if you go through the complete list um, you see a, about five wrong suggestions for every correct one well, um, but there's there's a few caveats to that uh, the the green line the mean average precision basically takes into account the ranking so it shows it shows that you see around two um, incorrect um, suggestions if you go through the list from top to bottom and you end at the last correct one um, so some very this is the last slide by the way um, some remarks on that precision it's a lower bound because very often the su suggestions are correct in a snowmet or machine learning sense but not very important for example if you have something like hospital admission there's a snowmet concept for it but it's almost never useful um, uh, for the medical history um, so it's very often just ignored while this is counted as a, as a precision error uh, but and and sometimes even those errors are useful in in i think so for example i saw um, an actual case where it said patient with depression and then the, the first uh suggestion was depression but then you also have suggestions like severe depression mild depression etc and that shows the annotator that there might be a that there's a more fine-grained uh, distinction that can, that could be used um yeah, I think that's the end of my slides. Um, do we still have time for some question? Yes, I think we should. Uh, I th really think we should prioritize uh, <laughs> a few moments for some questions. And of course, if you have to to leave, then then it's then it's perfect perfectly fine. But uh, but let's just uh, take a look at John's questions in the chat. Um, he asks if the annotation based if it's based solely on the fully specified name or preferred term or is this logical definition um, of the concepts taken into consideration 
um, no, so the we don't use well. There is some functionality to do to take into account um, pre coordination. Uh, Walter didn't show that, and I don't think it's used much. Um, but basically, it's it's really um, learning to map um, phrases to pre coordinated concepts. It's this is also, by the way, uh, um, it was a requirement. I, I think the the Cerner system only allows for pre-coordinated terms, so they don't know how to handle post-coordination expressions. So it wouldn't make sense. John, do you have something to elaborate on there? Uh, one additional question uh, on the hierarchies. You said that you're using the finding procedures and disorders. Did you also include the concepts from the situation with explicit context hierarchy as well for mapping things like um, patient history or history of type concepts? Um, the, uh, those, yeah, I think Walter is, is, um, is replying, no, that was a choice of the hospital. So the, re the response is no. <laughs> But but we do have some uh, from the on the NLP side we do detect whether something is a history or not, but it's not uh, being used uh, for the for this project. To, there, to, uh, to be yeah. honest, we asked to exclude that because uh, we don't want history of appendectomy in our uh, past medical history. So in our uh, guideline, we don't use these concepts. So that's part of the context of the, the model you're capturing it in. Yes, that's well, that's our uh, policy. We don't put the, situ the concepts of the situational uh, hierarchy in the, in, the, in the medical or the surgical history. We don't do that. There was a, uh, Ingrid, you, uh, yeah. you raised your hand earlier. Yeah, yeah. hello Walter. I had a question just on that. Um, you are looking in different uh, letters, documents. If there are codes that are similar, that are the one is subsumed by the other, are you going to process that and take the most detailed or letting them all in it? Uh, no, we, we annotate every diagnosis or procedure, in fact, only once. Um, it's not a big problem if we do it twice because we can filter it out. Um, but we always go for the most detailed uh, oh, okay. one. Yeah, yeah that, that's a lot of work. Uh, yes, uh, it's a lot of work. That's why you need uh, an interface that allows you to move fast. And that's really important. There was a big process in the interface in the years. Thank you. So, Thank you, everyone. Um, we are running a bit over time. So if you have questions specifically to, to any of our excellent presenters today, I would also advise you to maybe put them in the discussion forum in the user support reference group, and then we'll um, follow up on them there. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Good. Then I'll just wrap it up here. So thank you for, for all the, the good presentations today. Um, and I'll just let you know that the next implementation webinar will be held in, uh, in Q4. So somewhere maybe late November or early December, it hasn't been decided yet. Um, uh, so the, the date and the topic is still to be confirmed. If you, um, if you are a member of the USRT group, you will receive an email uh, when we when we have the announcement ready or otherwise you can see them in the web series uh, site as I showed you earlier. We welcome uh, suggestions for topics and, and presenters for the upcoming webinars. So please, if you have any ideas, uh, feel free to reach out uh, by sending an email to me uh, using the email address you see here. And here, I would just like to advertise a few of our upcoming events. 
on September 16th, we have our, our next research webinar. Um, and here we are pleased to announce that Elizabeth uh, Silva Lace is going to present the work that she's involved with on um, implementation of a terminology server with, uh, with Snowman CT in a graph uh, database. But please note that this uh, webinar will be held in, in Spanish. And then we also have um, the SNOMED International Clinical Day. So that's instead of uh, a clinical webinar in October, we will have this uh, clinical day with uh, presentations and discussions uh, about implementing and using SNOMED CT in clinical settings. You can sign up for these uh, events uh, on the web series uh, homepage. And the clinical day will be held on October 7th. So the day before uh, our big event of the year, which is the SNOMED Expo. Um, so this year, the SNOMED Expo will be held virtually uh, on October, 9, uh, no, October 8 and 9. Um, although the conference is uh, virtual this year, we still have all the key elements uh, that you know from, from a regular or normal conference. So we have presentations, keynote speakers, tutorials, uh, and more. And, and we, of course, hope to see you all there. Uh, we are proud to say that we, at this point, we already have more than 750 persons registered for the conference from more than 50 countries. Um, so please don't miss out of this free opportunity and please sign up for the conference at uh, snomedexpo.org. And just to uh, ask you if you have any final questions before we uh, end, I can see Suzanne, you asked about whether the clinical day will be recorded. I, I assume, I, I'm actually, I don't know, Suzanne, um, but I can, I can find out. Uh, so if you could send uh, me an email, I will follow up on that. Other questions? No? Well, then there's just left for me to say thank you very much to, to all of you for our good presenters and for all of you who attended and raised very good questions. Um, we look forward to, uh, to seeing you again next time. So please take care and uh, have a great rest of your day. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>